Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney. Uh, thanks for everybody joining us today. We have my good friend, uh, my brother from another mother, uh, Mr. Jack Cansell. How are you doing, my man? I am doing amazing, dude. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good, man. We've been waiting for this interview for a long time. Um, your your life has been easy as hell. You don't do anything. You just make millions of dollars, and it's so easy. Uh, that is far from the case, guys. We have a very similar story. Uh, we have been helping each other out for a long time since we joined Maddie A's Mastermind. Uh, but what I like to do with my guests is I let them start the story where they want to start it, and then we kind of go from there. So I'll let you take it away. Um, again, my name is Jack, um, and I am a I'm a mortgage lender here in Sacramento. But my true calling in life is that I'm a servant of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, he's really the person that is saved me from very, very dark times. So um, kind of a little background about me. I grew up in the Sacramento area. Um, I went to school at San Diego State. I was in the biggest fraternity at that school. And if you guys know anything about San Diego State, it's definitely somewhat of a party school. So um, I grew up in the church um, here in Sacramento. Um, It's always been a part of my life. But when I moved to San Diego, I eliminated that aspect of my life and my focus was on fully on partying and, you know, just chasing that lifestyle, chasing girls, chasing, chasing the, um, the, that, that rush just every single night, every single weekend. And, um, it just led me to some really dark times. So I, um, through that lifestyle, I began, um, abusing alcohol, abusing a lot of drugs. Um, and it kind of spiraled me down this day by day by day by day. So, um, that was the lifestyle that I lived in San Diego. And then I moved back to, um, Sacramento because I graduated college. I was working in a restaurant and I wasn't doing anything. I was working. I was getting off of work. I was getting drunk after work on the weekends, I was doing a bunch of Coke and just living that fast life, um, thinking that it was fulfilling me when it was really putting me in a very, very dark place. Um, and I continued that lifestyle when I came back to Sacramento. Um, and that was really my full focus was just chasing instant gratification. And the reason I was doing that is because I was masking the issues that I had with myself and the decisions that I was making. And it ultimately just led me to some very, very dark times. Um, in 2016, I was, there was a couple things that really happened to me that, that I hit rock bottom. I was abusing a lot of prescription pills. I was taking a lot of Xanax, um, that I was taking a lot of painkillers, which led me to, um, abusing heroin here and there. And there was two distinct things that happened in that year that, um, you know, really hit, I really hit rock bottom. So the first one was I went to a birthday party, took a bunch of Xanax before, um, blacked out, drove my car, um, and, um, crashed my car, um, did a hit and idea what happened. And, um, I thought it was just, you know, I thought it just happened. I thought everything, everything had surpassed and that situation, I didn't have to deal with it anymore until, um, I I was on my parents' insurance at the time and they, my mom gave me a call. It's the sweetest person ever. She is the prime example of someone who loves Christ and, is such a selfless person and all she wants is the best for, um, her children and the people 
that are in her life. And she called me and she said, why is the insurance company calling me that you did a hit and run? And it kind of all just crashed down on me all at once. And um, I had to admit some of the decisions that um, I was making in my life to her. And she was just very disappointed. Like it was a combination of being disappointed and being worried at the same time, because she saw her son in such a poor situation and making continuous poor decisions every single day. And that's not how she raised me. And, but at the same time, she also knew that that was something that I had to get out of myself because of where I was at. And then the other one was one, like I said, I used to, um, abuse, I used to smart heroin here and there. Um, and it was something that definitely was a very dark time in my life. Um, and I would use it to mask the depression that I had in my life. And I, I just remember one time I was supposed to go to a um, dodgeball game and I probably blew like a gram of heroin and I just nodded out. And I, I don't know, I've never OD before, but I think that was a very, very close situation. It was a very, it was very uh, close situation to me ODing. And that was another time I just woke up and I was just like, Oh my gosh, like, what am I doing with my life? Um, and those two distinct things kind of made me realize that some things need to change. And then, um, what really elevated me to another level is that in 2017, I went to a Tony Robbins event and, um, just from hearing him speak and really meditating and thinking about my life, I just realized that I was going through the motions and that I was not fulfilling, um, God's mission for my life. And I was continuously making poor decisions and I wasn't honoring him. And that, um, from there, I stopped drinking for like three months and then, um, still just going through the motions though. And that didn't make any significant, significant changes. Um, and something that I could have struggled with a lot is continuously chasing the approval of other people and wanting to fit in and not wanting to stand out at all because I was afraid to, which led me to a lot of dark times because I wasn't truly being authentic in who I was. I was being a chameleon in all situations because I was trying to conform to the standards of other people and not um, upholding the values that I grew up on and the values that I have with inside my heart. And um, I would say in 2018, I started um, getting more into the gym and um, started adopting a little bit of that lifestyle. And at the time I was, I had switched to, to real estate and I did that for about a year. Um, my first year I did fairly well. I sold like four and a half million or something. Like it's not any big number, but for your first year, you know, it's pretty good. And then um, I was at a specific brokerage here in Sacramento. And then I switched from that brokerage. I went into another opportunity, which didn't work out as how I wanted. So this is leading, this is late 2019 leading into 2020. So I, there was a couple months where I just didn't make any money at all. Mm -hmm. And I had a lot of credit card debt because of the lifestyle that I used to live because I never really had that much money, but I would party on credit and I would take cash out on credit to live that lifestyle. And, um, then 2020 happened and, um, then COVID happened and it was extremely humbling for me because when COVID happened, my real estate business was not doing good at all. I didn't have very much money and, um, that happened. And for a period of time, the market, slowed down as everything slowed down when COVID first happened because it was unknown territory for everyone and no one knew how to really um, react to what was happening because no one had dealt with it before. So um, probably 
so that's kind of where I hit rock bottom, at least financial wise. I was in a better mindset, but I definitely hit rock bottom financial wise. I had probably $200 in my bank account. I had $30,000 worth of debt. And I just didn't know what to do. So it forced me to um, take a job, which was actually probably the best job I've ever taken in my entire life. I started working at a grocery store, um, cleaning grocery carts because you have to sanitize them now. And um, I used, I used to, I did that for about three months and it was probably the most humbling and best experience of my entire life because it forced me to drop my ego and forced me to humble, humble myself. And it forced me to look myself in the mirror and really evaluate some of the decisions that I was making and that I wasn't living up to the potential that um, I was, you know, born, born to become, and I wasn't being the man that God wanted me to to become. So during that time, I um, really got closer to God and I began reading the Bible more and studying the gospels and studying um, how Christ walked in, in Christ's lessons when he was here, here on earth. And I really just went through a transformational phase where I was just sick and tired of going through the motions and not living up to my potential and making poor, this poor decision after poor decision. So, um, I put my full focus on during the beginning of COVID on working out. Um, and I began running and the first run that I did was actually in February and ran, um, three miles, I think. And I had never ran throughout three miles before running was always one of those things where it was like, I'm not a good runner. And I was, it was just one of those mental barriers that I would say, I'm not a runner. It's not for me. So I ran three miles. It was with my, um, one of my, one of my brothers, his name's Lauren, um, amazing, amazing human being. Um, and so we ran the three miles and then that next weekend he was like, Oh, you want to go on another run? I was like, okay, cool. And then went on another run with him. We ended up running a half marathon. And that was something I never, ever thought I would be able to do. And, um, one thing that I learned running that half marathon was that I enjoyed pushing past the mental barriers when your brain and the inner voice inside you is telling you to stop, you can, you can power through that and you can overcome that voice. And as long as you're comfortable being uncomfortable and from that, it's what a lot of people would call the runner's high. So, um, from that run, I got kind of addicted to running. And then from there, I just, focus more and more on my health. I was working at the grocery store then, and I was just focusing more and more and more on bettering me. I was reading a bunch of, I was reading a bunch of leadership books. I was um, reading a, a lot of psychology books. I was reading the Bible a lot. I was just working out. I was just trying to do as much as I possibly can to not focus on the prize, focus on winning the day. And when I shifted my focus towards winning the day and improving by 1%, like my mantra is one more percent. And I just have a firm belief that if you improve yourself 1% every single day, that compounds and is so powerful um, and it will make you into the best version of yourself. And as long as you improve yourself 1%, Today, tomorrow, the next day, in five years, you'll be a completely different, in one year, you'll be a completely different person. In six months, you'll be a completely different person. And that's what happened to me. So, um, and then. Hold hold, hold, hold on. We'll get, we'll get into the story. Uh, There's a lot to unpack there. Um, But ultimately, I want to talk about like, when you started hitting those rock bottoms and you changed who you were and you may be cut off the, the heroin, the hard drugs, you know, a lot of the drinking. Um, I do know this cause we talk every day and I've watched every single day of the journey, you know, even when you joined the mastermind, you were still using Adderall and stuff like that. So it wasn't like you were all cleaned up and, and ready to go. So yeah. my, my question is as simple as this, you know, what went from the day we met 
when you were on a bunch of Adderall and you were in a mastermind that was getting some good guidance, what, what, what switched for you? What, what, what was the turning point? What allowed you to, to, to start heading in the, the extreme positive direction? Uh, the turning point for me is when I um, gave my life back to Christ and I put my full focus in that. And I realized that by learning the principles that he teaches and um, living that lifestyle is what really, really changed me because it's more than just like, for me, it's more than making money or it's about accomplishing his mission for my life. So when I adopt that lifestyle and those principles, I realized that the decisions that I was making were not serving him. And that's really what, what changed me. So, well, don't you think also it was, uh, listening to people like Andy Fraselli and Jocko Willick hundred percent. Yeah. And, no, actually, and actually taking ownership of your own mess and, and not yes. blaming anybody else. Yeah. So I used to, yeah, I used to definitely blame people for uh, everything that happened in my life. I used to play the victim. I used to um, point the finger at every single person except for me. And from listening to, like I said, Andy Frisella, Jocko Willink, but also a book that really helped me out was Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins, um, Mm -hmm. because his story is very powerful. And um, also Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willink. That's probably the best book I've ever read in my entire life. And a book that I believe every person in the United States should read, especially during this time, because until you can take ownership for everything that happens in your life, um, I have a firm belief. If you can't take ownership, then subconsciously you think or subconsciously you believe that the actions that you take cannot change your life and your life is completely dictated by a third party. So until you can take ownership of everything that you have in your life, it's impossible for you to improve. So once I started taking ownership for everything that all the mistakes I had made, the specific position that I was in, um, once I took ownership of everything, it allowed me subconsciously to begin to grow and to begin to improve into the best version um, of myself. And I ultimately think, you know, I think when you're 80 years old or you're 90 years old and you have looked back on your life and and I want to sit there for a minute and talk about this because taking the job at the grocery store as a car cleaner from selling real estate for me, I think when you look back on your life will probably be the most, one of the most important parts of your entire life. No, I agree. hundred percent. I always think about that. So, and, and ultimately what led you to be okay, not be okay, because we're never okay, but, but take the ego check and, and just show up every day and do what you had to do. What, what was that like every day? Um, it was hard. It was hard, but um, I had to. Mm-hmm. It was either drop my ego, be humble and improve, or have that same mindset, think that I'm better than everyone else and not improve. And, um, when you're working at a grocery store, there's only, I mean, I guess you can, when, when you're in a position like me, when you're, when you're 29 years old and you're working at a grocery store, that's not really the ideal. That's not what I had envisioned for my life at that age. Right. So it was, there was two roads. It was either continue living this lifestyle and keep taking and keep going in, in a negative direction or, look myself in the mirror, realize that I'm working here and I'm in this position because of all of the decisions that I have made in the past compounding into this specific moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Or I could start winning the day, day by day, start controlling the things that I can control. And that's, um, you're on 75 hard right now. I'm doing it for the second time right now. Mm -hmm. It's the best program ever. And what Andy Frisella talks about is controlling what you can control, controlling what you consume as far as your diet and the information that you're consuming, controlling your movement, which is through exercise, controlling that, um, controlling how much water you drink. And I just started controlling the things that I could control by doing that program. And it really 
put me in a position to where I, for the first time in my life, um, I was in a winning streak because I was making positive decisions every single day, as opposed to making going three days and doing well, and then two days bad, and three days good, and then two days bad, if that makes sense. No, it's perfect. And, you know, the boss that you work with now, how long have you known him? So I've known Kyle for like about two years, two and a half years. Did he know you from the, from the, from the drug days or did he know you? Was he, has he always kind of watched scene or no? A little bit. Um, not, not too much. So I met him, um, at a Christmas party, um, a couple years back and it was funny. I was actually on Adderall when I met him. So, <laughs> well, um, you know, the reason I say that is because, you know, a lot of the times people go about their life, whether it be on social media or just like in life in general, and they think nobody's paying attention. Yeah. But that's not the case. Because people may not comment, but they're watching everything. Mm-hmm. And so your daily habits and who you are as a person and what you stand for uh, may strike a chord with somebody, whether it be a business partner or uh, owner of a business. And you, they might not say anything to you personally until they offer you the job. And that's why I say like, it's that's the beauty of focusing on what you can control. And then ultimately you had to have belief and something was going to pop off eventually. Right. And you were just going to handle what you could handle. And I don't, I don't think people understand that enough because one of the things I read in my book this morning is, is that the problem with the patients and the daily habits is as easy as they are to do, they're just as easy to not do. Oh yeah. Most definitely. And so like, that's why I wish people would understand if you focus on controlling what you can control, the universe sees that and and it's going to reward you when it's ready. But if you try to force it and shove it down its throat, it's going to keep bringing pain. Yeah. And that's, and what you said right there, when it's ready, you can't try and you, you can't improve yourself expecting things to change immediately. It's just not how it works. And so something I would be interested in your description of it, you know, who was Jack three years ago and who is Jack today as I'm talking to you? Three years ago, I was a victimized individual who couldn't take ownership of anything. And I was someone who was chasing the approval of everyone else except for the person I was looking at in the mirror. Today, I am someone that takes ownership of all of my decisions. The only approval that I seek is God's approval and the person that I look at in the mirror. And um, my mission is to just spread, to just um, try and encourage people and to be authentically who I am. Um, I don't care about people's opinion. I just don't. I've come to the point in my growth now to where I truly do not care if you like me or if you don't like me. I will stand up for what I believe in. And if that does not resonate with you and if that does not click with you, that's fine. I will not change who I am and who I authentically am to please the um, emotions of other people. And that's probably another thing too. I used to be an extremely, extremely emotional person. Things used to affect my energy and my mood and would put me in a, just change the entire course of my day if something happened. Like, let me think of an example. Like little things in the car, you know? Like someone cuts me off, I get super, super mad. And it like ruins the next two hours for me. Now. I just, there's no point in, in, in getting emotional over little things in life. It's what happened and being able to really seize my emotions and, um, look at it from a thousand feet up. It's helped me make better decisions because you don't make good decisions in an emotional state. You make good decisions in a stable, logical state. So that's another main difference. And, and I think ultimately, one of the things that like can get you to that place is when you realize that the transactional 
relationships on a day-to-day basis don't don't really dictate the happiness meter within my life meaning my my goal and my mission is so much greater that I have no option but to to get out of bed and be excited about it right because you know ultimately me and you live by the same creed like we lead from the front like or I think a lot of times especially in my early 20s I, I wanted to like poke advice at people that's what I call it like poke advice and I'm I won't do that anymore like unsolicited advice is not needed if you ask for my opinion I'm happy to give it but more importantly the way I show people how to live a life and how to be an example is just by being myself <laughs> and being the best version of myself and I'm sure you found a lot of um a shift in your the thing that's the things that are around you because you're choosing to live the life for yourself and not others. Yeah, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately, like I know how me and you view health. How uh heavy was your heaviest? Um this was when I so I, I used to love IP. I'm in California, so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. California has a pretty heavy IPA presence. So I used to drink a lot of IPAs. So I'd probably say the heaviest was 250. And okay. that was probably in late 2017, early 2018. And how, how heavy are you now? Um, I weighed myself yesterday. I always do my measurements um, weekly. And I measured in at 193.4 pounds. Okay. And so ultimately over the last six months, seven months, I've seen a huge transformation in your, your body and how much weight you've lost. What would you attribute? Cause you were, you were working out before that. So what would you contribute the, the extreme shift lately in your health? Um, not drinking. Um, don't get me wrong. I like wine, but mm-hmm. not drinking continuous, not drinking a lot. Um, but then also, it's honestly 75 hard. That's how mm-hmm. I changed my physique because uh, one of the things on 75 hard is that, as you know, is that you need to follow a diet. So I began counting macros and I began knowing exactly what I was consuming, how much protein I was consuming, how many carbohydrates I was consuming and how much fat I was consuming. And I'll tell you this, if you want to change your physique, it's uh 85% diet and it's 15% exercise. It's mm-hmm. just a process. And it's, so, it's really, it's really odd for me because somebody said something to me yesterday and it like snapped for me. Cause I'm almost done with my first 75. Is it like, it's not an issue for you because that's your lifestyle. And so it's like, when I see like drink water and I see like read a book and I see like a diet, I'm like, I already do that. So it's not like, but the focus on it is very intensive and I love it. But ultimately like that's what everybody's trying to get to. It's like, I think too many people put it, they put metrics and, you know, they put their movement or their actions on the set of outcomes instead of just like embodying the identity of a healthy person. Right. And so if you're a healthy person, these options aren't a decision for you. It's just who you are. And so subconsciously, you don't have to stretch for that because it is what you are. So I'll say this, something that really changed for me because I've always like wanted that, you know, I've always wanted to be shredded or whatever you want to call it. And uh, that used to be my focus. I used to talk about it all the time. Um, And until I came to the point where it was no longer about the results of getting that physique and it was about enjoying the process and making the improvements. When I shifted that mindset, that's when I really started improving because it wasn't about the prize. It was about improving every single day, improving my pace times when I'm running, improving my lifting times, um, doing different exercises that would challenge me. It wasn't about like me getting that physique because I have a firm belief that it's not about the prize doesn't the prize isn't better than the process. The process is better than the prize. And that's how it's always going to be. And it doesn't matter what it is. It can be in business. It can be in um, relationships. It can be in um, your physique. It's about the process. It's not about the prize. And if you talk to any high producing person, 
Um, you talk to a lot of them. I study a lot of them as well as talk to them and they have the exact same mindset. It's about the process. It's not about the prize. So. No. And it's, I, I was listening to an interview with Ed Milet and, and Dr. Andrew uh, Hubert and he was saying, Oh, that one was really good. Yeah. They've studied that you actually release more dopamine during the pursuit of a goal than actually obtaining the goal. And so that's when you hear when people sell their businesses, they, they be, they, they hit into a form of depression because ultimately like people are like, man, when are you going to retire? And I'm like, never like, like, you know, like I'll always be helping somebody, whether it's for money or free, it's just who I am because it keeps your mind sharp. It keeps you motivated. And like, I look at uh, my new coaching client, who's a kind of a hard nut to crack. Like my mind's sharper than it's ever been because he's challenging every aspect of the abilities of myself. And so instead of looking at it as a, Oh my God, I'm nervous. I look at it as this is a way for me to extend the abilities of who I am. Right. And, and he's gone to other people and he's had other help, but he hasn't had my help. And so, you know, ultimately like I'm in then, and then 90% of the process or the, or the getting started is believing that you can, right. And then, and then going from there and, and controlling your day-to-day activities. And so, you know, you've joined Matty A's mastermind and now you're in the Arate syndicate and talk about um, just the proximity to other people like that and, and how much it's leveled up your life being around other winners and, oh, and positive it's, outlook. Oh, it's been significant. It's been a huge game changer for me. So um, Matty, Matt is, has been a very, very positive influence in my life. Um, don't even hang out with him or talk to him that much, but his example um, for me has shown me that I could be a lot more and his encouragement in the conversations that we've had has just, it really developed a spark inside of me that I could improve who I was in that moment. And it was a huge game changer and um, proximity is power. Um, Probably the, the most impactful line that I heard at the Tony Robbins conference that I went to. And it's a little bit, it's, it's a very known line, but it was said differently. Um, He said that the, your life is dictated upon the expectations of the five closest people in your proximity. Mm. Uh, Because when you're around people like another, another person and you know him, he's, he's, he's my, he's my brother. Like he's, he's one of my best friends. I'm so, so grateful for him is my, is my brother, um, Ryan, Ryan Brewell. He's, Mm -hmm. he's helped me so much, helped me realize, um, that I could be so much more and helped me level up. And he's been such a positive impact in my life. And ever since honestly knowing Ryan, I've improved, I've made drastic improvements just because he, as you know, is a very high producing individual. He's also, he's younger than me, but he's been a huge influence and and mentor in my life. So just surrounding myself with people who expect me to be better has been a huge game changer for me. And ultimately um, something I heard the other day that I think so important, I think the same things happened to you. This happened to me is when you're making a change or you're shifting who you are as a person, sometimes you have to hold on and cherish and use the belief that somebody else has in you before you believe it in yourself. Yeah, I agree. And so, you know, one of the conversations that we've had, we've had many that uh, have been, you know, earth shattering, but I want to highlight one conversation because for me, it's the most important thing. Um, I was in Joshua tree. Uh, I had just got separated from my wife. I was, spending some time with myself. I was, it was late at night and I had the revelation that no matter where you are financially, no matter where you are in your life, whether you're going through hard times, good times, or or, or great times, you know, you need to have a servant's heart. And, you know, I think, I don't know if I talked you into or inspired you, but, but you were giving a part of your paycheck um, when you were cleaning grocery carts, when you had no money (laughs) and, and kind of talk to us about the philosophy behind, you know, like Tony Robbins says, if you don't give when you have a thousand bucks, you won't give when you have a million and just talk about what that means to you. Um, it, it means, it means everything. And I could, I could actually be better at that 
but you know, um, that's something that I always try and improve, improve on. Um, but I, I learned those lessons from, from the Bible and the Christ teaches to be a giver before a receiver. And there's a specific story in the Bible. I don't remember which book it is, but um, a very poor woman gives her last dime to the church. And Jesus is praising her and his apostles are what are curious, are, are confused. They're saying, why are you praising her? And he's like, she has a giver's heart. He, she gave everything that she has and God loves a giver. And, um, life isn't about taking, it's about, it's about giving, it's about giving back to other people. Um, if you're just taking from people and you're not, um, giving back, what a poor life to have. Life is about pouring into other people. It's about helping your neighbor. It's about loving your neighbor as yourself. Um, one of the most powerful, um, commandments and, um, that's, it's been a huge game changer for me. I, some of the people that I'm around, um, have some are, are amazing, amazing givers. Uh, my, my broker that I work for right now, his name's Carl, amazing human. Um, not only is he donating a significant amount of money to a run that I just did my personal run to feed the hungry, which I'm donating to, um, the Sacramento food bank. But on Saturday, we, um, I think we put together like 28 bikes that he's giving to the homeless. Um, Mm -hmm. that's what life is all about. It's about giving. It's not about taking. Um, and that's what God calls us to do. So that's, I think, I, I think ultimately the reason, the way to get to a place like that, where you can see the beauty and the impact that you can have and, and, and so on is being clear enough and comfortable enough in who you are as a person. Right. I mean, cause ultimately, ultimately when you're, when you're operating in your soul from a place of weakness and scarcity and victim, you can't see the beauty in the impact. You can't see the beauty in the giving but when you operate from a place of mental fortitude and strength and abundance, you know, you, you know that by serving and stepping out and doing for others and you're going to get more than you put out. And, and a lot of times I get DMS and, you know, guys are like, thank you for your content, man. You know, let me know if we can ever connect. And like, I call them right there and they're like, holy shit, I didn't think you would call. And I'm like, like, let's just jump on the phone. How can I help? You know? And yeah. so, and there are times like, obviously like I need to learn my boundaries and stuff, but ultimately I know that I'm going to, I'm going to win out by having that attitude. But I think something I was talking about this morning with my girlfriend, super important is I think that a lot of times when we get into business, right. Or like I'm a coach or like I'm an investor, like we, we learn from a lot of other people and we like what they do and we can model what they do. But what I'm finding as I go down the rabbit hole further and further is the is I'm more comfortable in stepping into what I do in the way that I do it. And when I do that, it seems to hit people harder, right? And ultimately, you know, you've taken some stance stances on some couple of things um, where you get some pushback. But what I love about you is that you're not making apologies for what you believe in when others would cower down to, to the, to the pressure and everything, because ultimately through those stands, you're going to find your people. And I think you know that. And, and so, you know, talk about that and talk about how you view that because a lot of people are scared to speak up, you know, and I heard that Andy Purcelli podcast, like the world needs leaders right now. We need fucking leaders to stand up in business and, you know, and, and not in a bad way, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Um, so I, so I, one of the most impactful lessons that I've ever been a part of was uh, for the RSA syndicate. And it was Andy Frisella talking about being authentic. And if it's in relationships, if it's with business, with anything, you cannot 
make an impact unless you are authentic. It is impossible to appeal to everyone. It's impossible. If someone made the cure for cancer, there would be someone out there that would say, how dare you for doing that? And it's just a fact. So when I heard that webinar, it sparked a flame in me. And I came to the conclusion, I said, I am no longer going to change what I believe and change my values to appease to other people. I will stand up for what I believe. I will be authentically who I am and I will be unapologetic about it. And that is something that is non-negotiable for me. And I'm at the point where I am willing to lose relationships for it because I will be, I will stand up for what I believe. And, um, I will res- always, I will always respect other people's opinion. I will never attack anyone. I will never call anyone stupid. I will never talk down to anyone. However, I will not back down on what I believe. And you know what? If that makes you uncomfortable, sorry, I'm not sorry. I'm not going to apologize for standing up for what I believe and being who I am. I will no longer be the chameleon that I used to be in my past who would change who I am based on who I was around. What a sad way to live when you have to change who you are in the inside to get the approval of other people. And how stressful is that? You're continuously going into interactions where you're like, oh, I need to be this way. Oh, I need to be this way. Oh, I need to be that way. Life isn't about that. Life is about being who you are. If you're an ethical person and you're standing up for what you believe, take ownership of that. Don't don't try and change who you are to make someone else happy. That's not what life is about. And I think ultimately the biggest issue around that is that there's so many versions of yourself that you don't know which one you get lost in your own lies and your Mm -hmm. own bullshit. And ultimately through the deep work that me and you have done on inner work and personal development and and so on and so on, you know, we're shattering versions of ourselves that didn't serve us. People that showed up the way that we thought people needed us to be. And ultimately it just feels uncomfortable to be in that skin and not be who you want to be because ultimately what I hope for everybody in my, my mission with the podcast is that as adults, whether it be outside pressure or internal pressure or so on and so on, we have lost some sort of joy. We've lost sort of some purpose of duty, some purpose of fun. Right. And I want everybody to get back to that because you know, I'm listening, my first book of the new year, I've got on my book schedule, that I'm listening to Relentless by Tim Grover. Oh, that one's a good one. Yeah, I love that book. It, but, yeah. but he's, but he's talking, he's talking about like, just like going to work. And like, he said, the moment that shit gets fucked up is when you make it too complicated. Like, if you just go and live in your core values and be who you are, I promise you, that you will repel the people you don't want to, and you'll attract the people that you do want to, you'll feel better about your life and you can control what you can control and you can go out and make a difference in this world because ultimately it doesn't fucking mean a goddamn thing. When you go from 150 grand to 160 grand, it doesn't mean shit. Like wake the fuck up. But what matters is when you give back that 10 grand that you made, to a homeless kid or bought bikes for a kid or you know what I've been doing right now? It's my favorite thing in the entire fucking world. There's let, let me tell you something. I could close tomorrow on a million dollar piece of property and it wouldn't make me feel the way I feel about this. I'm meeting people that I interview for the podcast and I'm finding out that the 13 or 14 year old kid is like into entrepreneurship and I have a, and I'll buy them rich kid, poor kid from Robert Kiyosaki. And then my friend has a kid's, uh, entrepreneurship course and I'll pay for their first month. Oh, that's awesome. And then I make them go work to get the 25 bucks to pay for another kid. 
and they'll send me a video from their dads and they're like, dude, this is the greatest video I've ever got in my life for my friend in San Francisco. His little 13 year old kid was like, Austin, thank you so much. I'm learning so much about the entrepreneurship class. My goal is to get, make $50,000. So me and you can invest in a real estate deal together. And crush I saw it. that. And I yeah. was like, I was like, yes. I was like, that is what life's about. And it's like, do you chase do you chase the things that you want to want or do you chase the things that really matter? And ultimately you have to chase the things that fill you up and give you the fuel to keep going because there's a lot of days where you don't feel like it. Right. And so what I want to talk about here, what I think separates everybody. And I want to read this. Uh, I want to read this because I read this this morning is that, um, is that he said, uh, said, courage is not having the strength to go on. It's going on when you don't have the strength. So talk about those days, because we do do a lot in a day, and we do work out a lot. And there's a lot to keep in. Talk about what you do on those days when you don't want to get up and do what you do. Um. So this is actually, so there, there's a trend for me. So another one of my huge mentors who's, the head of the Arte Syndicate, but I've been listening to him for a very, very long time as Andy Frisella. I think that his content is amazing because he teaches you tactics, not motivation. There's a huge difference between motivation and tactics that you can use. So um, his company is First Form and I'm in love with their that company. I will not buy supplements from any other company for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. um, and one of, this is just a little uh, tactic that I personally use. One of um, his, I don't know who he is in, like what his position is in first form, but he, I get emails from the guy all the time. His name is Will Grumke. I also, um, I also DM him here and there. I follow him on Instagram. Really great guy has um, given me a lot of great advice as far as supplementation and just advice as far as diet and stuff like that. And because I wake up between four and four 30, usually go to bed about 10 to 11. And I'd be lying to you if I said it wasn't hard to get up that early because it is, it sucks. It's super cold right now. It's super dark. It's one thing that I specifically do on those types of days, because I believe uh, this is something I used to fail at a lot because I used to always want to get up early, but I used to fail it. 60% of the time I would get up like an hour later. And, um, I think that it's, this is something Jocko Willink does. He preaches getting up early. Cause that's the first win of your day. If you ignore your, if, if you, if you, if you get up and you don't hit the snooze button, that's the first win of the day. It's powerful. Um, so on the days that I don't, um, want to get up and want to do what I need to do, so my, one of my main goals in life is to get married and to start a family. It's very important to me. It's something that I have wanted ever since I was, a, uh, ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to start a family and I need to become the man that I need to build the man that is ready to be in that position and build the leader, um, in myself to be ready to be blessed with that opportunity so on the days that I don't want to get up in the morning or I don't want to do what I need to do, I think you're doing this for your future family. Um, that's kind of my why is I don't even have it yet. Do I know I'll eventually get it? Yes, I do. But I push past that because I think you're doing this for your future family. You're becoming better today because for them. Um, so that really, it really is what drives me. So. And I think ultimately one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard is like, if you truly want to honor your future partner, you need to work on yourself so much that they find you. So something that I pray about um, every day is that I become the man that I become a better version of myself and I um, become the man today that I need to be to attract the woman and that she improves today to become 
compatible with the man that I'm going to become. So that's mm-hmm. something that I pray about every single day. So Yeah, because ultimately, you know, speaking from experience is that if a partner or partners in a relationship decide that they no longer want to work on themselves or better themselves, well, then that ultimately is the detriment or the, the dying factor within a relationship. Because if one person is working out, getting better personal development, doing these things and the other isn't, you know, that relationship is not long for the tooth. Um, but ultimately like what I find amazing, you know, and the men that I truly follow and respect are, are great husbands. You know, they're, they're great fathers. Oh, most definitely. And, and the reason is, is because they don't need, it's not need, that's not the right word, but they don't, they understand that they don't, what they want out of life doesn't mean that's what their partner wants. Right. And so, meaning like they could want all these crazy things, but like ultimately like your wife or your, or your husband might want to just you know, take care of the family and create an amazing home and and take care of you and stuff like that. So there's a role that everybody can play as long as everybody's on the same page, which is growth. Like as long as everybody's on the same page as growth, then the rest of the stuff can be figured out. But when you stop growing the relationship and your ability to get better dies with it. And one thing that I want to point out that I feel like a lot of people that don't truly understand the growth mindset and what growing really is Growing is not about making more money. It's not. My mom is an example. Did my mom make very much? She made a pretty good, she made a good wage. She was a teacher, a kindergarten teacher, but she was the best damn kindergarten teacher she could possibly be. She continuously adapted. She continuously grew. She continuously sharpened her ax to make sure that she was the best teacher that she could possibly be. That could also be, if you're a stay-at-home mom, be the best mom that you, or stay-at-home dad, you can, the best stay-at-home parent that you can possibly be. So growth is not just about making money. It's about improving who you are as a person. And um, one, of the, one of the things I'm railing on right now, and this is my big soapbox, is that I think people haven't maximized out the ability of who they are but more importantly, in their current role that they're in and they're, everybody's ready to move to the next shiny object because they don't, whatever, they don't feel challenged or, or they're, they think they've got to the end of the rope. But my question to you is anybody that's out there, and I'll use it as an easy example, like you're ready to buy all these properties and you're ready to be an investor, but have you maximized out as a realtor the being the best realtor in the market to create more capital to invest in the market? Or are you just looking for another way because you know, it's something new. So my big thing is like, make sure that you're maximizing out the, the, the full ability of the scale of who you can be. And ultimately here's the kicker. I truly don't believe that you can get the end to the end of that stick. So you can keep trying to maximize. It's very, something I'm very passionate about. Yeah. You can always continue to grow and maximize no matter what position that you're in. And you know, the, the saying it takes, what, 10,000 hours of work to become an expert. Mm -hmm. You can't just expect to do something for a little bit of time and expect to reap the benefits and truly, um, truly find out your potential by not dedicating the time. Things take time. So, and, and something, uh, you know, if you were to paint a picture and the vision always changes and, you know, the mortgage business you're doing now is going good and you've been there for a couple months um, and and you're starting to get that momentum. But if you had to like vision out, just say the next year headed into 2021, you know, what are you focused on? What are the things that, that you can share with people that can maybe give them an advantage headed into the new year? So, um, like I said, I'm, I'm very blessed to be where I'm at right, right now. Um, I, for the first time in my life, um, I feel like I'm truly home. Um, I'm so grateful and blessed to know my my uh, business partner and boss, Kyle, his name's Kyle Johnson. Um, and our goal for the next year is just to really optimize our business um, to the max. Um, and so really our goal is to, we want to double our production um, next year, um, hire someone new, um, but that's just for business goals. So I want to, I want to, 
I want to, um, like I said, double, double our production uh, next year. But as far as other things, um, I'm going to, this is probably one of, this will probably be one of the biggest accomplishments for me because it was something I didn't think I was going to be able to do. Um, pay off all my debt, which I, <laughs> I have a lot of debt. So that's going to be a huge. You, you say that all the time. It's really not that much. But but I but I understand it feels like a lot to you. Yeah, so, so it's going to be a huge huge uh, weight off of my shoulders. And then um, as far as health wise, just continue to improve on all of my numbers. Um, and guys, what he means health wise is this 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 uh, savage continually runs marathons on Sundays just for like fucking shits and grins. So you know you go out and train for a marathon for six months. He's banging out marathons on Sunday uh, because he, because he likes it and he likes to push himself. But when he says personal goals, you know, who knows, he might run across the state of California. We don't even know, but, but, but I want to share something as we, as we roll down to the end of this thing. And and I want to, I want to have it on camera, uh, and recorded so he can hear it. Um, when I met this human, uh, my life was falling apart, not in a sense of like, I was going to be homeless, but ultimately I wasn't who I needed to be. And my marriage was not in a great place. Um, Things were happening, but, but not exactly where I wanted to be. And, you know, through all of um, when your life is being blown up and you're getting laid off from your job to have another human being there, um, to console with, to talk to every day, to text. Um, and, and I say we text every day, guys, every day. And to have somebody that is in your corner with no judgment and who is inspiring you and, and pushing you and keeping you accountable and just making you feel younger because you know you got to keep up with this young fucker. And being a true friend, like I don't, I think a lot of people have forgot what a friend is. Somebody that is there rain or shine, no matter what is a feeling that is hard to describe. And at the same time that he was doing all this for me, I've single-handedly watched uh, a new human be reborn, a, a true pillar of the community um, inside and out physically and mentally and in business and and so on. And to watch him go from a heroin addict to lose 60 pounds, to uh, a drug addiction, to become this amazing example of a true leader and a true human is literally one of the greatest thrills of my life. And I just wanted to share that with everybody because that's the way I feel. And it's an honor to, to have people like this in my corner. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's, the feeling is mutual. You've been there, through, been there for me through thick and thin, and I, I seriously see you as like my my brother. So I. No, and I appreciate that. And before we head out of here, I want you to share. If you had to share two to three things or four things for anybody that's listening that wants to make the shift, that wants to take their life to the next level, that wants to get a promotion in their job, that wants to get a better physical health physique, what would you tell those people? Um, so I'm, I'm a Christian. So this is the first thing I'm going to say, um, because it's very important to me. First and foremost, um, adopting my relationship with Christ or readopting my relationship with Christ was the most impactful thing. I've ever done in my entire life. So, um, he having a relationship with Christ gives you, gives you hope. It gives you peace and the, his teachings, not only when, when you see all of these business gurus teaching selflessness, how to listen, just all of these business practices, they're taught in the Bible. They're taught in the gospels. So that would be my first. Second would be stop seeking people's approval. Stop seeking people's approval. It is toxic. You're not going to be authentic. You're going to be a version of yourself. That's truly not you. And if you're not truly who you are and you don't accept who 
who you are in the inside, how is it, how are other people going to accept you if you don't accept yourself? That'd be the second thing. The third thing would be take ownership of everything that happens in your life. If it's good, if it's bad, every single thing that happens in your life is directly based around a decision that you have made in the past. So where you are right now is exactly where you need to be. And if you want to, if you're in a bad position right now, if you continue to make the exact same decisions, it is impossible for you to improve. So begin taking ownership of your decisions and exactly where you are in your life. It's the most impactful thing that you can do. And the first hurdle you must get over in order to start growing. I love that. Such sound advice because ultimately the, the buck stops with you. And if you like, dude, I'm, I'm out of the box, man. I get weird. Like, I'm like, dude, I tell my clients sometimes, like if you've drove down gray street for like six months straight, fucking take S street for a week and see if your shit don't change. Like sometimes in life we become what I call the, it's a fucking wheel. It's a wheel. And you sometimes have to shake up the wheel. You got to change it up a little bit, man. You know, if you go to the same gym all the time, go to a different gym, you know, whatever, just, just make these little changes and you, you'd be surprised how these little changes can shift the way you think. You know, if you, if you've, one of the things I'm on right now is that if you've read business books and personal developments for seven months straight and you're still where you need it, same place, read a goddamn fantasy book. Like just fucking give your mind something else to think about. Yeah. Watch the ice capades. I don't give a shit what you do, but just change it up because if the actions that you're taking on a day-to-day basis are not getting you where you need to go, then change it up. Try something different. Listen to somebody different. Like, because you never know what they're going to say. You never know when a word's going to hit you or a sentence is going to hit you the way that it needs to hit you. But dude, I can't thank you enough for coming on here and, and giving us the time. It, so amazing. So much to take from that interview. And uh, guys, if you like this episode, make sure you share it with your friends. Can I say one more thing? Sure. Yeah, just one more thing. So sure. say um, you want. Like, I, like I was saying before, um, I, I read the Bible a lot. And this is the most impact one of the most impactful verses that i have my favorite verse in the bible and it's something that i just want to share it's james one um two to four and i don't have it memorized after read it it says dear brothers and sisters whenever trouble comes your way let it be an opportunity for joy for when your faith is tested your endurance has a chance to grow so let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed you will be strong in character and ready for anything. And what that verse tells me is that during challenging times, no matter what you're going through, if you change, if you approach it with the mindset that that is happening for you and not to you, and that is strategically happening to happening to you so that you can learn a lesson and you can grow, your life will change if you approach all of your challenges in that type of mindset. So that's my favorite verse in the Bible. I love it. I'm not even going to say anything. Guys, thank you so much. Uh, Share it with your friends and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.